Hello YouTube. I'm going to show you the Mac Daddy of them all. Everybody wants to know if there is a Team Viewer version for Linux. Guess what? There is. And the best part is, all you have to do is literally go to teamviewer.com and click on the download button. You want to make sure that you download the .deb, which means that that .deb file and package will work for Ubuntu, Debian, and or Debian and Linux Mint because they're all made off of the Deb, the Debian uh, kernel and background. So the, the the base package is .deb. All you have to do, I'll have a copy of the link in the description. Once you go to teamviewer.com, click on the down, green download button. It's going to take you to the version for Linux. You see right here, there's 64-bit and 32-bit, depending on what one you're running. If you're running the 64-bit, download the 64-bit dev package. If you're running the 32-bit, run the 32-bit. If you notice right there, there's one for Red Hat, CentOS, Fedora, SUSE, and other systems not officially supported. You can still get the tar, TarGZ file. And be able to install it anyway. So we're going to click on the download deb 32 bit, which is what we're actually running here. Keep. Shouldn't take it real long to download, depending on your internet connection. Once it's done, all you have to do, just like with normal Chrome and Windows, click on it, it'll execute. Your package installer comes up. Once it goes through scanning the package, it'll finally light up, say install package. Click on the install package button. It's going to ask for that magical password, which is the root password. That is the password that you put into the very first account you created. So you will need to remember that password. It's highly important. Package installer. Now it's actually doing the full install and it's done. Click close. You can click a X on this one once it's completed and then you can close out that. Now that we have TeamViewer installed, go to internet. There's TeamViewer 9. Right click on that, add to desktop. Now we have an icon. Pull up TeamViewer 9. I accept license agreement and like magic, boom, it looks exactly like it does in Windows. It runs exactly like it does in Windows. Let's see. You can set up the unintended access just like with Windows to where all you have to do is put in the password that you remember. security the most part of it is exactly the same I would highly recommend under the security that you run probably anywhere from secure eight characters to very secure ten characters and you can literally copy and paste that password to someone if they're needing it to work on your system Show the advanced options. Well, it absolutely does not give you the option for the uh, VPN, but you can still do the monitor driver and the print driver and be able to print. It doesn't allow you to do the VPN like it does in Windows, but that's fine. You can still do the remote control and be able to work on someone's Windows system, Linux system. It doesn't matter. Um... I'm sure you can probably get it to run in BSD, which is Unix. So, I mean, th this this works for everything. I mean, it works on Androids. It works on Linux. It works on Windows. It's a really good general all-around remote control, remote desktop to be able to work on a French computer system or something like that. And on Windows systems, you can do a VPN. All you have to have is the part, just like in Windows, the partner ID and then their password, which... If someone was connecting up to me, it would be this number right here, and then this password. This password changes every time that it gets closed. I can force it to change right now. That password's going to change every time. You have to have that current password to be able to log in, but those numbers right there would get you into it. 
Uh, that's a basic rundown for TeamViewer. TeamViewer runs very, very well. It's very useful. I've used it for numerous occasions. Uh, I've used it entirely across the United States. Uh, I'm in northwest Arkansas and worked on a guy's computer in, or he was a friend of mine, but I worked on his computer up in uh, Tennessee and several other places. As long as you have broadband internet and they have broadband internet, it works flawless. You can close the connection from either end whenever you're connected up. So like if someone's trying to access something you don't want them to, you can drop the connection on them right there, click the X, it's done. It kicks them out, they can't get back in. It's going to force the password to change. They're not going to log right back into the system without you letting them. This information's out there for absolutely everybody. As always, watch, like, and share. Have a great day.